Welcome to Check the Tape this week. I don't have time for a fun intro or anything cool. I gotta, I gotta hammer this one out because I got a lot to do. So this one might be shorter. Uh, so we're starting here in the second quarter. I didn't have anything that I watched. I don't think in the first quarter, even though we're up ten nothing. I didn't have anything to highlight. So we're starting here with, uh, you know, this this play where Chattanooga almost breaks one. Again, what's the big stat this year? We haven't given up a touchdown at home. How did we not give up a touchdown here? Uh, well, Quan and Seth Coleman ran this guy down. Mostly Quan. If you see here, you know, Quan's the one holding on to the foot. I don't know if Seth would have gotten his foot. Um, doesn't matter because what I want to watch is Quan. So we'll go back to the beginning of the play. As you can see, we're sending Quan on the edge from the free safety for a little little edge blitz. Um, we're leaving everything wide open here. So you got single, single, single. Uh, and here comes Quan to this edge. So he's all the way up to the edge. You know, again, their offensive coordinator, maybe he's in the booth, maybe he's standing right over here, gets really excited when he sees a safety on that edge because, you know, if they can squirt through a hole, there's no safety valve. Actually, why the safety is named the safety. Now, there is nothing to prevent that guy from breaking free except for maybe this guy who's four yards behind him and catches him like that uh but the thing about this play to me is i mean let's see where Quan like Quan is what he's at the let's see we're 50 45 40 so he gets to the 44 um and he's on that edge, and then he's what? You know. This foot race here, he's starting from back here. Yep. That's a that is an NFL safety, ladies and gentlemen. That is what an NFL safety looks like. I mean, even when they get to this side view here, I mean, here he is. He's way out of the play and then still gets there. Um, <clears throat> but this next view is even better because watch him. So he kind of puts his hand on Gabe Akis's hip there. And then right here, I'm just going to go super slow. -mo. He gives himself like a push off just to get himself started. That's so good. Oh, that's like that's the little stuff that NFL scouts are looking for. Like he knows his momentum has driven him into the backfield and one push off and go and he gets there it's just so good um, so you know maybe we should just I don't know let the tape play to the very next play and see what this future NFL safety uh, is going to do on this play oh that's right he's he's gonna pick it off in the end zone and uh, we're not going to give up a touchdown and we're not going to give up a single point uh, the entire game this play obviously was made by Gabe Akis, uh in two ways really and we'll, we'll show that on the replay here um, but not only did Akis force the bad lobby throw that that easily settled down to Quan, but if you see that one little jump there Go back and look at that. Okay, watch his little jump right there. So quarterback kind of is going to cock his arm to throw right here. And he can't. And then he throws the other one. So if we go until after the commercial break, they show a different camera view. And we'll see what that quarterback was trying to throw. So again, pump faked and wasn't going to release because... Uh, Gabe was going to block the pass, and so he threw the second one uh, for the interception. What was he? Th what was he throwing to when he cocks right here? This guy, completely wide open. You know, Quan has this edge. He's going to pick up this guy, fading to this end of the end zone. But right there, when he's thinking of throwing, that's a touchdown. But can't. He has to pull it down because Gabe was going to block it. Let's go watch it from the other angle again. Yep. 
you know, right there. He wanted to. He's thinking, oh, I've got that tight end wide open. But he couldn't because it was going to get stuffed, and that happened. And that happened. So great play by Gabe. Takes away what would have been a wide open touchdown pass right here. Forces the bad lofted throw. Quan goes and gets it. We'll skip ahead a bit to a little, uh, little Barry Lunny magic. So let's pause here. Third and two. Um, Miles Scott is going to get the ball. Uh, <coughs> I love this little setup here. You know, you've got a tight end standing up, so your bunch for you know tight end is on the end of the line, but your bunch formation is centered around uh, that tight end on the line. Uh, so it's really fun. So we'll just watch the play. Um, you'll probably remember this play. This is the first down to Miles Scott walk on wide receiver. I wouldn't shut up about it in the spring. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the best thing about this play to me, so, you know, look, I'm not going to say Barry Lunny stole this from me when I ran it on the playgrounds of my, um, fourth or maybe fifth grade Nerf football at recess and lunch. I'm not saying he was there and took this play from me. But the reason people picked me to call the plays, uh, even though I wasn't much of an athlete, the reason I got to play QB was because I would run, I would run the same thing and nobody could resist it. You roll a quarterback one way, you have every receiver, whether he's starting on the left side or the right side of the quarterback, bleed to the right the same way the quarterback's rolling right, and you have one receiver leak out left. And there was not a fifth grader who had the discipline to not flow with the traffic and as the quarterback's rolling right that receiver bleeding left is wide open even his guy would leave him because everyone is running to one side of the field and it's impossible to not follow that momentum so obviously Barry Lonnie Jr. was somewhere in the bushes watching this play and came up with this play concept because um, the whole idea is basically these guys here it's going to look like a run play to the left, and these guys are here to block, not to be receivers. Um, and it's just going to be so easy for these guys to flow with that, and then it's going back the other way. So the best is probably watching this guy here. You know, you see that? Let me go super slow mo here. That little stutter step right there. That's it. He's got to stop his momentum and go back the other way. See this guy here? Just watch. So, see how the play is flowing this way? These guys, everybody's flowing this way. This guy has the edge. So, he's either taking the quarterback or what? They think it's a flip coming to here. Um, they think they're going to need to do this. So, this guy is completely, I'm going to make the stop. It's not going to happen, not on my watch. You know, even our offensive line on the snap flows with it. And when that guy makes that stutter step right there, it's too late. Now he's got to go catch up. And he's not going to get there. And Miles gives him a stiff arm and gets 10 more yards. Um, so it's just a great little misdirection. Love it on third and two. Would have loved that on fourth and two against Rutgers and basically the exact same spot on the field last year. Fake that pitch. Everybody's thinking it's this. How much of it did we get to see there? I guess we didn't get to see his stutter step. Yeah, he's already trying to catch up again. You know, if that guy had the discipline to not, you know, if this guy here had the discipline to hold the edge and saw him sneaking across, you know, and was streaking with him, then it's a much harder pass to complete. But because he's scrambling to catch up, first down. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. You know, <laughs> nothing is blocked on this play, okay? Like, there aren't blockers out in front. Everyone is running... 
Sorry to belabor the point. Everyone is running this way. Everyone is running the blocking for this pitch play to Reggie Love. You know, there's nothing other, you know, everyone is running one play and all the defenders are reading that play. And Miles Scott just sneaks out the back. Great, great stuff. And we'll, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep it here for the next play as well, which is some more uh, Barry Lunny misdirection. Um, here, I'll fast forward. Oh, I fast forward too much because we already scored. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. The old flea flick. Yep, 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 and wide open. This poor guy right here <laughs> turns around like what? Let's just here we're gonna we're gonna do a spot shadow on our guy here. Okay, just watch. Uh, just watch here. I think I pointed at the wrong guy, didn't I? Yeah. So the inside this guy who's we're gonna watch. Okay. Outside, this guy will take the outside receiver. So this guy has a responsibility of picking up that tight end if he's going through. Sees the stuff in the backfield. You know, right now, he thinks something's going on here. He's watching this pitch. It's a reverse. He plants that foot right there. Uh, okay. There's our thing to watch. Okay. Just watch this guy. I'm going to go super slow-mo. Watch for this foot plant. Okay, he sees it. What's happening? Nope, he doesn't have it. Plant my foot there. Once that foot's in the ground, it's over, son. Now he doesn't even try to catch up. Yeah. Passes already over his head. Touchdown. So many things. To pro I mean, that's... Look. See? Let's go back there. See the word Zupke right there? The inventor of this play? Zupke Field. Just makes sense for a flea flicker to happen on Zupke Field. So much to process on. He's coming around this end. Wait, no, it's a reverse. Wait, no, the quarterback has it again. Wait, no. Uh, I'm pretty sure the tight end just ran past me. We're in trouble. Yep, here's our guy. I'm just gonna spot shadow. Wait, is it? Wait, I think I'm. Uh oh. Poor guy. We'll pick him up here again. Yep. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that was his name. Um, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Dix, but uh, he just, uh, you just got uh, Michael Marquez. Let's um, talk about this dime package. Uh, I call it... Here, let's pause here. I call it... I don't know why I have names for these things, but I call it 56. Because there's basically five linemen and six defensive backs. And no linebackers. Maybe five zero six. I mean, there's two linebackers, but they both... So we've been doing this the last two games... Um, we might have done it at Indiana as well. I, I've noticed it the last two games. So, we're running Calvin Avery off. We're running Keith Randolph off. We're running Isaac Darkangelo off. We are bringing on Kenena Odaluga, uh, redshirt freshman linebacker. Kendall Smith, he wasn't on the field in the formation before. Sometimes it's not him because, um... You know, it's depending on what formation's out there. And you can't see it on the screen. We're also bringing on Matt Bailey. Um, so, uh, basically, we, we, we set up this formation where we don't have any linebackers. Or at least on the snap, both linebackers are rushing. Now, you know, Tariq Barnes is right there. I'll just pause it here. 
So this is why I call it 5 and 6, 56, whatever. You have Akis and Coleman rushing from the edges. You've moved Johnny Newton over, and he's the nose tackle. He's he's lined up over the center. You take the two linebackers you, you brought on, Kanena, and I guess at least for the formation before Tariq Barnes was on the field, and you put them in these two gaps. They can either rush or they can drop or they can spy the quarterback or whatever they're doing. And then you have six defensive backs. Two corners, Taz and Spoon, and four safeties, basically. Quan, Kendall Smith, Sidney Brown here, and I guess it'll probably back out and you can see Matt Bailey. I mean, simple play. You know, Akis got credit for this, but he and Seth Coleman got there at the exact same time. Oh, good. I'm glad he... I'm such a parent. I'm glad he celebrated with his friend. Um, you know, there's Seth Coleman. Here's Akis. Let's have a meeting at the quarterback. They get there and put him down at the same time. I'm assuming both got half a sack. Yeah, why are you circling him, Mr. What was it, Anthony Heron? Why not circle old Seth up here, son? <laughs> I mean, literally. Like, look at that. They both beat the tackles. Both tackles are turned facing backwards and they both get to the quarterback at the exact it's like it's like synchronized sacking same move let's meet take him down love it love it love it love it so that's the you know i go back to the beginning here so you know it's hard to see without seeing bailey um you can see his shadow coming on there um, but that's how they, that's what this, that's what this third down defense is. Um, I think, actually, I don't think they did it against Indiana. I think they put it in after Indiana went five wide and we were really struggling that final drive. So yeah, here you go. There's Bailey. So corner, corner, safety, 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 safety. So six defensive backs. It's really a dime. But in this dime, you have five linemen, two outside linebackers. So really, in a sense, <laughs> like if you want to get technical, it's one defensive lineman, two outside linebackers, two inside linebackers, both playing defensive linemen, two corners, and four safeties. So we're going to call it a one, four, six defense. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so a one four six. Welcome to our one four six. This will be real quick. We're gonna do some. Uh, we do a little, little Brett Bielma lip reading. Uh, so if you notice right here, he notices that the guy. If you see right there, he's got a grip on. Let's see if we can. Yeah. You got the hand right there on the face mask as he comes down. And Bielma sees that. And so the camera cuts him on the sideline and we get, hey Mike, hey Mike, that's the second face mask. Mike comes over. That's the second face mask. I agree, coach. I agree. Okay. See the guy coming on field here? That's what this little video will be about. So it's uh, Alec Bryant, only a freshman. So he's a freshman at Virginia Tech in 2020. Played a little bit, but didn't matter. Didn't That season didn't count. That was the COVID season. Uh, in 20, summer of 21, he transferred to Illinois. He transferred after July 1, which was the deadline, and so he had to sit out last year. So third-year player, was a four-star in high school, um, you know, recruited to play that Owen Carney position. So he comes in, you know, he's splitting time with uh, Gabe Akis right now. And I just, you know, I just wanted to highlight these two plays. So this, he gets a half sack. Um, you know, you know, in some sense, this is, a, you know, it's a, 
it's an FCS tailback and FCS tight end trying to block a four-star kid who went to Virginia Tech and then came from Houston. So it's kind of a get-out-of-my-way little kids kind of a situation. But still, I mean, you know, this is a solid, you know, engages with the tight end, tailback's there, tailback stands, no chance, and then he's just right through the gap. So, you know, you get off me, you get off me, you come here. Down you go. And Johnny Newton's there. Now they circle Newton here. I mean, just watch Newton. I mean, he's kind of blocked out of the play and gets there at the very end. I mean, to me, this was, you know, this whole play is Alec Bryant right here. Get through. Now the quarterback doesn't have a pocket. Um, Akis gets a piece of him. Uh, Newton's in there, and so is Alec Bryant. But, um, Really good play. Now I'm going to jump ahead. Uh, that's a run play. Gets stuffed. Uh, here's third down. Here's our guy, Alec Bryant. Hold the edge. Force the runner inside. Man, that's great stuff. Again, just a FCS tackle. But, um, you know, this matchup forces that tailback to plant that foot and go inside because he got the edge. You know, if this tackle is able to collapse Bryant, then this tailback's going to take this edge and try and beat. Is that Sid coming up? Uh, no, Dark Angelo. Um, so, you know, if that, you know, here's how this play is set up Dark Angelo is going to have to get to this edge if this guy can collapse Bryant. Uh, can't. He has to plant that foot and go inside of him, and now it's a completely different play because there's a whole bunch of people collapsing down that way. So, you know, that's what you want from that outside linebacker on a running play. Um, you know, just watch Bryant right here. That's what you want. Plenty of people to make. Even Bryant gets in on the tackle at the end. Really great series. Just a freshman. We'll have three more years after this one. We have skipped all the way ahead to the final play of the game. Um, <clears throat> a lot of things. Oh, like four things to discuss in the final play of the game. Um, first, this is our... We're fully... We have the twos uh, on the field for this. So we get a good idea of who the twos are. Um, some of these guys will play up with the ones. Um, I think that's Kanena right there. Odaluga. Um, you know, like the ones are like 16, 17 guys who 11 of them are on the field all the time. And then when they go full twos, it's guys who don't play very much or if they're just in specific packages. So uh, Jared Beatty and Shimon Cooper are the outside linebackers. In this setup, it looks like we've got, um, that's R.J. Wilkins from the Vandy transfer, uh, is it nose tackle, and then Evan Kurtz and Sed McConnell, uh, are either side in the Newton and Randolph positions. Uh, Dylan Rosiak, uh, yeah, that would be Kanena, and then... Looks like both corners on this side. That's Terrell Jennings, the transfer from Minnesota State. That's Tyson Rooks, the only 6'5 corner in the world. Uh, Matt Bailey here, and I'm not sure who this other safety is. Can't see him in this frame. Um, <clears throat> those are the twos. Uh, so it's it's kind of good to get a check like this of, like, okay, who is... Oh, there it is. Keontae Curry. Uh, it was the was the deep, was the free safety. Um, here's, uh, well, there's just several things to talk about. I love this right here. Um, so what are we? We're 37 seconds left, 31, nothing. And DeVito is going through something with Miles Scott, uh, and Brian Hightower and, you know, like discussing a play like this. And when he's there, uh, you go and then actually I'll throw it here. Love that. Like seriously love that that they're talking ball 
with 30 seconds left. Um, some play in the game. Uh, really love that. I also want to talk about this. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Do we have the tiniest shoulder pads on Earth? Like, I mean, I'm not looking for 1994 Mickey Johnson shoulder pads, but like, I don't know. Like, there's just something I've noticed this year of some guys don't even look like they're wearing shoulder pads. I don't know. Maybe it's a new technology. Maybe it's a new thing. I've just been noticed, like, a guy like Evan Kurtz in the past would have had some pretty massive shoulder pads. Here, it just looks like a little something. Um, I'm not sure. It must be a new technology. Just something I've noticed when watching or just being around the players on the field or anything like that. <clears throat> okay, here's, here's the... Here's the last thing to notice from this clip. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. They're running a play with 56, 56 seconds on the clock. Whatever. Uh, Jared Beatty's gonna make a nice little play. It's a TFL. Good play. Huge future for that kid. Um. So, well, let's let's talk about this. So, a few years ago, I don't remember what year. Uh, it's probably several years now. Uh, college went from the old, uh, once the ball is set, start the 25-second play clock system, to the NFL system, which is um, as soon as the play is over and done, and we know, you know, there's there's reasons they don't restart the play clock if there's an injury or whatever, but, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the simple thing is it's 40 seconds. Once the one play is done, start the 40-second clock. And, you know, you now have 40 seconds to start the next play. Uh, usually, fans know this because of, uh, you know, if there's two minutes left and you have a first down, the other team is time out of timeouts, you can kneel it out. Kneel, 40 seconds run down. Kneel, 40 seconds run down. Kneel, 40 seconds run down as the game's over. Uh, <laughs> in a game like this, so here's what I noticed. Okay. Um, so, play is over, whistled down 49 seconds, okay? It's 40 on the play clock, right? So, it, you know, it counts down to this and it resets, and then they'd restart it right about here, you know? 47, they'd restart it. No, 40, well, they're going to, they'll probably re, nope, they're, yep, they're just going to turn it off. And let 49 seconds run off to end the game. So, I mean, I get it. Look, game's over. Doesn't matter. If this was a tight game and and the home clock was doing this, obviously, coaches would be going insane. Everybody like, it didn't reset. It didn't reset. But I don't know if I've ever seen 49 seconds. So I'll just, I mean, just let it play. Like, they, they just, you know, that was it. They had enough. Coaches come out, clock runs all the way down. But it should just be noted that, I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? Um, let's go back. So play, I mean, he's down at 51. Clock would probably already reset right at 49. This would be at 36, 35, 34. No, they just kind of like, you know what? Let's just be done. And they let it run all the way down. Which is fine. It's fine. You know, but it's not going to affect the outcome. I mean, I don't think they're going to try a Hail Mary to try to get points on the board. You know, a 68-yard Hail Mary or something. You know, it, it is what it is. But it is kind of funny that, you know, we just kind of tossed the rules of football out the window for a second. And said, you know what, let's just let 49 seconds run off. And it's late. Everybody go home. So there you go. We have checked the tape. Time for Wisconsin. Time for a really big game. See you next week.